Um, Jaden Rashada is suing Billy Napier, a man by the name of Hugh Hatchcock, which anytime I see the name Hugh Hatchcock, I immediately think, got to be the money. Hugh Hatchcock and a man named Marcus Castro Walker, who has already been fired from the Florida uh, you know, coaching staff, um, for, quote, a failed name, image, and likeness deal that would have paid Jaden Rashada $13. $0.85 million. This comes straight from the report today because I do the reading because you don't and so you don't have to. Um, quote, the complaint filed in Pensacola Division of the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Florida details a number of counts alleging Napier, Hatchcock, and others fraudulently induced Rashada, a then highly regarded high school prospect, to attend Florida with no intention of following through their financial promises. Specifically, the lawsuit claims, quote, fraudulent misrepresentation a misrepresentation and inducement, aiding and abetting fraud, civil conspiracy to commit fraud, negligent misrepresentation, torturous interference with a business relationship or contract, and aiding and abetting torturous interference. These are not light claims. These are not light words. Um, anytime I see a conspiracy to commit fraud, woo. <laughs> those, those are big allegations right there. This is a quote directly from the lawsuit. Quote, Hatchcock, on behalf of himself and Velocity Automotive, the company that he owns that he was going to siphon some of this money through, Castro Walker and Coach Napier orchestrated and executed a fraud upon Jaden and were substantially and knowingly assisted by one another in carrying out the fraud, the lawsuit says. Each of their individual schemes would not have succeeded without the assistance from one another. Bottom line, uh, Jaden Rashada's lawyers are out here under the impression or under the impressions that they will win this lawsuit because these three individuals consp uh, conspired to, uh, you know, lie to this young man, get him to their university with no intentions to ever pay him his money. Um, they also go on to mention in this article that obviously Florida had to talk Rashada out of his commitment to Miami, which was not just a verbal commitment. The reports say that he committed to a $9.5 million NIL deal mm. with John Ruiz, which is the whole purpose of this lawsuit. The whole grounds of this lawsuit are that Florida, and well, not Florida, Billy Napier and this Hatchcock individual and uh, their, their director of player personnel at the time conspired to cut him out of this $9.5 million deal that he had with Miami. The interesting part about this, however, is that John Ruiz Ruiz came out today and was like, I don't know what deal y'all are talking about. I ain't never offered no nine and a half million dollar deal. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. But nonetheless, they're suing for nine and a half million dollars in, in retribution and, and in payments made back uh, because they talked him out of this Miami deal. And Miami's out here like, nah, we never offered anything like that, nor was there ever a contract. Don't know what that guy's talking about. Very interesting. Again, we will get back to that in here in just a second. They continue in this uh, reporting. To sway Rashada's decisions, Hatchcock and Castro Walker offered the $13.85 million deal with a $5.35 million with $5.35 million, including a $500,000 signing bonus to come through Hatchcock's Velocity Automotive Company and the rest through Gator Guard, the NIL collective that he started. So he was going to put $5.5 million through this company that he owned and the other $8 million through the actual NIL uh, collective that they had created out there at Florida. Hatchcock had previously committed to donating $12.6 million to the Gator Boosters and early re uh, media reports stated that the Gator Guard raised $5 million dollars in his first 24 hours basically telling you that this was the guy and how he was going to put this money together they continue before the deal was finalized however hatchcock informed rashada's representatives that he no longer wanted to route the nil payments through his company because he planned to sell it according to the lawsuit instead he and castro walker proposed money coming directly from hatchcock and the rest coming through the gator collective florida's other nil collective that involved uh that uh involved eddie rojas the ceo of the gator collective who allegedly texted zager about the impending deal so we have these two collectives now being tied up in this with their correspondence between one another a text uh, from Rojas uh, who allegedly texted texted Zager I guess is the agent here uh, saying quote tell Jaden we look forward to setting him up for life need to set up his brokerage accounts ASAP dude is rich and we just got started the deal was officially signed November 10th 2022 with the first half a million dollar payment due to Rashada December 5th um so there you have it I love that quote right there um quote dude's already rich and we just got started 
Love that right there. All cap, by the way. All None of this actually came to fruition as they continue to talk about in this article. It all came to a head on December 21st, the first day of the early signing period, where Napier allegedly personally vouched to Rashada that, uh, that Florida alumni, quote, were good on their promise that Jaden would receive $1 million if he signed with UF on National Signing Day and that Hatchcock, Hatchcock would make that payment. Harlan Rashada later texted Zager, quote, Coach Napier said Hatchcock's on a plane and that he will wire $1 million. He wants the paperwork, and I am sending it if you are good. In other words, Napier contacted Jaden Rashada's camp and said, hey, send in the paperwork. We'll wire transfer you $1 million instantly. Obviously, that never happened. Harden told CBS Sports that Napier never should have been making those promises, which at the time were also against NCAA rules. Quote, that's not a role he should have been involved in. He shouldn't have made those promises, and he should have stayed out of the whole or, or area. He, quote, didn't. Uh, in total, the lawsuit argues that Rashada is the victim of a new world where boosters have never had more influence. Quote, Jaden's miserable experience reveals in stark and dramatic detail what can happen to young student athletes when wealthy, when at all cost alumni insert themselves into college football's recruitment process. So here, here's my thing. At this point, after reading all of this, um, I came to this conclusion. Uh, I have real questions of uh, of Rashada's actual case here, to be honest with you. Uh, if you listen to that and if you read the reports today, they ripped up his contract, his $13.85 million contract. They ripped it up before National Signing Day. He didn't actually have an NIL contract to sign. And at that point, it was basically, hey... We promise. We, we promise if you come here, we will get you your money. Uh, Napier's calling, promising a million-dollar signing bonus. Uh, the booster's on the plane. Don't worry. We promise when he lands, everything will be fine. They ultimately say, okay, we'll sign the paperwork. We'll send the national letter of intent. And obviously, the million dollars is never wired. In fact, reports say the only money that ever changed hands with regards to Jaden Rashada was a $150,000 payment that uh, that Hutchcock, or whatever his name is, Hugh, our boy with the money, actually wired to Ruiz to avoid any type of legislation or any type of lawsuit that Ruiz would bring up for them poaching this player. So that's the only money that was ever changing hands. Florida giving Ruiz money to keep his mouth shut for the activities that they did to get Rashada there in the first place. <laughs> a mess. Yeah. By the way, I don't, again, I don't think there's any, gra this is a he says, she said type of lawsuit at this point. This will do nothing in other, uh, other words than just drag Florida through the mud for the next foreseeable future, however long this lasts. Welcome in, by the way. Yeah, I mean, you have to imagine this is just another nail in the Bill and Napier coffin if the 2024 season doesn't go well for him. Now, this is kind of falling on his lap. I mean, the Jaden Rashada situation has kind of already looked like as a massive fumble on there, and now you've got this lawsuit going on. Now, what, no matter whether it ends in them being upheld or not, it's still a horrible look for him. It's funny to me. It's just college football humor to me that this individual now granted this lawsuit was filed a long time ago like they started the processes of this lawsuit being filed the moment he asked for his letter of intent to be revoked so this started back in like 2023 20 early 2024 when they started putting together this package to go after uh you know billy napier and sue these folks uh for retribution payments so obviously you would have known that kirby smart knew about this when he went about recruiting this individual but to me it is college football humor that a Georgia football player is filing a lawsuit to sue the Florida head football coach and oh by the way the NCAA can't do shit to said uh, Florida football coach because Tennessee whipped their ass in court mm -hmm. y'all see the the spider web I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'm you know what do you call it? wielding at this point right here very kind of interesting crossovers that we have between perennial rivals Mm. SEC, baby, it just means more. You could say something like that. It does indeed mean more. Uh, I, I thought there was a lot of funny coming out of this. It's not funny that this kid got screwed out of $13 million, almost $14 million. Um, but the payment plan on this is absurd to me. It is absurd that I, I would almost fire Billy Napier off of the idea that he was going to give a high school football player this kind of money. The reports came out today that he was going to get paid $250,000 a month for the first year he was on campus. As a true freshman, they were gonna give this man a quarter of a million dollars a month, all right? His sophomore year, 
That was set to escalate to $291,666 a month. <laughs> His junior year, they were going to pay him $375,000 a month. And his senior year, it was going to drop down to the lowest annual value at one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars a month. I, I I don't I don't think this is a good look for Florida. Period. I don't think it's a good look that obviously that they're getting their head coach is getting sued or brought up in a lawsuit. I also think it's a worse look that they were going to delve out some of this money to. By the way, I mean like none of these guys are one hundred percent guaranteed hits. Mm-hmm. Like no. none of them. And he and I, I think Jaden Rashad is immensely talented. I think he's he's a really really good quarterback. I don't think he's worth fourteen million dollars. I damn sure didn't think he was worth fourteen million dollars coming out of high school because I don't think anybody's worth that kind of a promise coming out of high school. We, we're at a hit rate of about one out of every three five star quarterbacks. I think that's what we're at right now over the last ten years of this sport. Just because you're highly rated, you guys know this, doesn't mean you're going to be good. Uh, love it right there. Shout out to Jimbo. Appreciate you working out at Planet Fitness, giving us content despite the fact that you've been shit canned for the last seven months. Um, all right. Rashada's lawsuit obviously going on. Now, I, I put this at the top of the local hour, obviously because it's the biggest story, but I, I've seen some not not – kickback but i've seen some comments on social media that i i just don't i don't necessarily understand and so here's the question is this Jaden rashada story and is this Jaden rashada lawsuit uh and topic is this a distraction and how much of a distraction will this ultimately be um i truly believe at at any other school and i'm not any other school but just at another school okay not georgia at another school this might be a a thing right this might be something that's constantly talked about or this might be something that gets brought back into the news when this individual goes in and talks to the media again but guess what, guys? Jaden Rashada enrolled at the University of Georgia. He signed or, or committed to the University of Georgia. That joker ain't getting in front of a microphone and in a camera until maybe, maybe April of 2025. Like We, we ain't going to see this dude. He's going to be off in a hole, grinding, and never to be heard of or seen of ever again until we get practice availability and we get to take pictures of him in his new practice jersey this fall. That's the next time we're going to see Jaden Rashada. So this ain't going to be something that people have to answer for in front of the media availability. Hell, we don't even get Kirby until SEC media days. Okay, so two months from now, is he being asked about this? Yeah, probably. Somebody in the in the media pool in Dallas is going to ask him about this. He'll brush it off, say he can't talk about an ongoing uh, lawsuit or on, ongoing whatever, and then he'll move on. He'll have his little talking point, and that'll be it. This will be a moot point. Okay, in the NFL, maybe this is a big distraction. Maybe that there's a big herd of media reporters around Jaden Rashada's locker every day. But that ain't the case. That's not what's happening right now. Again, this guy won't talk to the media uh, until 2025. This isn't like, for example, Cam Newton's investigation, midseason. Auburn's like on a national championship run. They can't afford to lose a single game because it's BCS, right? We are grinding it out trying to get to a national title game. And then all of a sudden, Dan Mullen dry snitches. And now all of a sudden, the NCAA is wondering where, uh, you know, Hubert Newton's money came from. All right, that's not the situation. It's not a situation at all. I think this is a very, very moot point um, moving forward. At best, this is a a backup quarterback that's got a lawsuit going on off the field. In reality, this is a third stringer who ain't even on campus yet. It's a a non-issue. It's a non-talking point of a football player who, uh, you know, probably won't even have to go into court for this. Probably something his lawyers handling at all times mm-hmm. for him. That's what I was about to say is like he's probably not even the one that's having to deal with all the details of this or really know anything. Like he's probably just a guy that they're relaying information to, and it's like, hey, this is what's going on. This is the next date. This is what's happening next. This is what we're working on. Blah blah blah. Like he's probably just sitting there, like, okay, like we got it in the process. I just sit here and continue to do what I do until this is resolved. The way the public reacted to this made me think that. Most people just said or believe that Jaden Rashada woke up today and was like, you know what? I'm going to sue Billy Napier. Yeah. I'm going to sue him because he did me wrong. After I've, got, I've gotten to Georgia now. You know what? I'm a Georgia Bulldog. I'm going to go ahead and go after their head coach of the Florida Gators. That's not what happened. Like This has been in the works since he left Florida. So I think that's probably where people are kind of like, oh, this is a distraction now. But it's been ongoing. Like Kirby Smart knew this was probably going on when he agreed to have him come on the team. So not I don't probably. Think, he did. There, yeah. I there mean, was – Quotes in the the article that uh, in the reporting of this today that said basically Kirby Smart gave his blessing, which that wasn't 
wasn't the, the the timeline of events this is how this worked they filed this lawsuit or began to collect information for this lawsuit in december of 2023 they didn't start recruiting rashada until two months ago a month ago whenever he hit the portal whenever it was right so they they start that then i guarantee you this was brought up during the recruitment process of rashada hey by the way Within the next three months, we're filing this suit and we're going to sue Billy Napier, his biggest booster, and his director of scouting or director of player relations, whatever old buddy's uh, title was that they've already shit canned. We're going after this. We got to get our money back because we never got the money that was promised to us. And we believe they did some uh, co conspiracy to, to get us out of our money. I think that was the best, one of the best parts of this story from a Georgia's fan perspective. If you're listening to this as a Georgia fan, your football coach basically was like, "Hell yeah, brother! Hell yeah, brother! Let's go!" 